What is up, people? This is Oracle. We are back online for some more Vintage Cube. This pack does not contain any piece of power. The strongest card possibly is Oath of Druids, but it's kind of a card that's difficult to make work very well. And yeah, I don't think we can... I mean, we could first pick it, but it's not that, that powerful. The pack all around is just very weak, I think. Like, it's it's a fine Legacy Cube uh, pack, but for Vintage Cube, it's just really underpowered. We could first pick Colonnade, but Blue-White Control, as good as it is in Legacy Cube, is not the, a Tier 1 archetype, I don't think so, in a Vintage Cube, unless you get a lot of very good count spell, but usually you don't. Elf Pass. Big Planeswalker are usually a bit too slow for Vintage. I think I'll pick Fixing. Uh, pack is just pretty bad. Not much we can do about it. Okay, here we have a Necromancy, which is really powerful. You, you need... Your, your deck in Vintage Cube should either have very, very good count spell or be able to do something sick in the first three turns. Or put a lot of pressure, like mono red or maybe winnie white. Otherwise, it's just if you're playing a mid range deck, if you try to like ramp into placewalker, it's just just gonna be too slow very often. Uh, oh, huh. nothing great here. Power Sun is strong, I guess. Gives you six mana on turn four, which is pretty key. Dark, Dark Sleek Shore could be fine. Uh, I'll, I'll go with Power Stone. Uh, doesn't really go... Well, no, I may, maybe I'll pick the Shores. If you want to, much better if we play Reanimator. Could stay open and, and play the pick the Power Stone, but I'd rather probably stay open to other things. These packs are just incredibly weak. There's like no good cards. Nothing that lets us... Again, you need to be doing something crazy in the first couple turns, or very often you're just not gonna get there. Um, four spike, I guess, is disruptive. Not that amazing, though. Maybe Gideon. Again, just blue-white control with Planeswalker is not where you should be, I believe, though. Unless you do have the count spell to make that work. Bribery can be strong, but again, it's also sometimes a little bit slow. I think Imp to Drag is the stronger option here. But I'm not sure about black. I guess maybe we'll play blue white control. Um, yeah. Not my favorite, but we're not seeing as a reemission spell or Faddis to reemit. We're not racing any anything other than blue-white control cards so far. So yeah, we, we can try that, I guess. It's funny because I think blue-white control is one of the strongest, most stable and efficient archetype that's not mono-red burn and that you can play in Legacy Cube. In Vintage Cube, very often, it falls a bit short. Um, because people do various things that, you know, it's like playing control in modern, for example. I mean, currently the blue-white control deck are pretty good in modern, but it, it's not always been the case. And the problem is there are so many different strategies doing so many powerful things that it's kind of difficult to have your answer, answers line up well with what they are doing necessarily. Uh, unless you have count spell again. If you have good count spell, you can deal with anything, almost. So yeah, that's that's why I think blue white control is kind of a difficult deck to make work in vintage cube more than legacy cube. That being said, it's still it's still something you can do. Like I would I would thrill by the five cards if we're in legacy cube, but again. If if your opponent's gonna get a blight steal on turn one or two or try to kill you with storm cards, you know, your bribery, Gideon and whatnot, just not look gonna look too good.
A Jenny could be a ca fine card to splash for. Recently I've been quite impressed by Ballista in control. Um, it's just a fine finisher, takes care, it's good against aggressive deck, it's just... I don't know, this card is just... It's, it's never bad. It's never bad. Um, I think I'll pick that over the uh, Ageny Splash. The Elf Path Wield, that's a very good thing for us. Not a big fan of Primaz in control deck, but it can be a good sideboard card and uh, eh, I think I should be Concealed Core Chart actually. Second piece of fixing for black. Let's us maybe splash for Lingering Souls or I don't know stuff, but Ashiok, I guess. Ashiok is a very good, very solid card. We might want to splash for maybe, mm, I guess Vindicate can be pretty good. Um, well, probably a couple of other things I'm not thinking about right now, but I don't think Urborg is going to be a big upgrade over just Swamp if we play some amount of black. Legion's Landing might be a fine sideboard option against uh, Burn, though. Just produce a cheap creature they probably have to spend a Burn spell on that's not going to go to our face, otherwise we start getting life. It's just, you know, can also threaten to block their X1s. Oring Wield, okay. Yeah, again, I don't think... Uh, oh, Thalia is actually a very good sideboard option against Storm. Which can be a rough matchup if you don't have the count spells. I'm getting a bunch of white. White is open at the table. White is always open, though. White is probably the weakest color in Vintage Cube by a lot. And in blue, we've seen Bribery, Titan, not so much, but a uh, couple things, I guess. Pass to Exile is decent. Don't think Sphinx Rev is great. The pass might wheel, but I, I think we're still picking it because there's nothing else we're interested in. Blue red land, not looking too good. Even if we're playing black, I don't think we're going to splash for Grave Titan. We already have, I mean, double black card, probably not going to happen, right? But mainly, I mean, also we have two six mana finishers already, so. Pass looks fine. Between Bribery, Gideon, Elspeth, Frost Titan, Walking Ballista, we're already looking good on finishers. Pass to Exile, O-Ring, Dodge, pretty good removal. We're looking for probably more fixing, fixing is always good. A little bit of acceleration could be nice, Signets and whatnot. And Count Spell. Count Spell is... We, need to be, we probably want to pick Count Spell over everything else, it's just... Especially cheap Count Spells. Seems like a pretty good get deck for Green Monolith. The um, yeah, the turn um, turn three Elf Path or Frost Titan or Bribery or Gideon, really nice. We might wield the Bane Slayer for the sideboard, and Lingering Soul since we have these Black Lands could be a thing too. But Green Monolith really strong. Make our deck a little bit less fair than. Straight up blue white. Like Reman. Not a hard counter, still gives you the time to, you know, not die. <laughs> it's also pretty good against stuff like Natural Order or Tinker. They sack the thing, but then bam, back to their hands. Uh, yeah, just solid all around. I was streaming a little bit earlier, played another blue-white control deck that was a little bit more on the mana. Uh, we had Upivol, some Signets, and a Gilded Lotus. But it was mostly a white-blue control deck. And I, w I was feeling like the deck was not so good. However, with three odes, and I think some of the game 
we just had so many answers to things that our opponent couldn't generate enough uh, value, basically. Uh, I mean, no, it, no, it's it's not the the right way to put it. They couldn't, they just couldn't keep something on the battlefield for long enough. We just were removing everything, and we defeated a, a pretty a very good Reanimator deck by just dealing with everything. So this can work. Treachery is good. I've been very impressed by Teferi. Almost want to pick Teferi over Treachery, but I, I'm pretty sure it's wrong. Uh, Teferi has been really good though. And there are some deck not playing creatures. Ah, this is probably wrong, but it's a card I've been very happy to play with. And... As much as Treacher is one of the best cards in Legacy Cube, it's a little bit weaker in Vintage Cube. Again, there are some decks that are really not heavy on creatures. Definitely can deal with anything. Um, again, I I'm not saying it's the right pick. It's just a cool card I haven't played a ton with that impressed me and I'm happy to play more with it. Uh, Teferi, uh, sorry, Treachery probably a stronger card and maybe the right pick. But uh, you know, I've treacheried a ton of things in my life. I know what it does. I'm a bit more interested to test Teferi. Uh, again, since since this is Vintage Cube, Teferi has been good but not insane. I think in Legacy Cube this will become one of the best cards though because Blue White's already very good and Teferi is just amazing. I do like Dragon Lord. We're really good with finishers here, we just need to survive. Unexpectedly absent, always a card you get pretty late. And that does, I don't know, people don't tend to respect that card, but it's really good. Commit Memory and Jace are both pretty good. I think we'll pick the Commit to Memory. Sphinx Rev Wield. Yeah, definitely might have Wield. That's an argument. That's definitely a strong argument to pick the um, the Treachery. But again, this card has been very cool to play with, and I want I want get I want to get some more. I like Revoker as a sideboard option. Um, could play Lingering Souls, but if we can say straight up Mono, uh, sorry, Blue White, I'm 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 fine with that too. Fastborn can be quite broken in the right deck, but. It can also be completely dead. Really hit or miss. Yeah, we are more than good with finishers. Just need the cheap interaction now. But we are not... Even if we find something amazing, like... Uh, one of the best finishers for this kind of deck is obviously... Um, Consecrated Sphinx. Even that I don't think we pick, unless there is nothing else, because we don't want anything that costs more than 5 in the deck anymore. The green monolith should be rebroken though, because we have a lot of super strong things to ramp into. So that's nice. More blue-white land would be good. Blue White Signet, amazing, and just, you know, cheap count spell. You don't have the three mana counter spells in this cube, you just have the the classic count spells, I guess. I mean, there is count spell, obviously, mana leak, mana drain. You don't really have the cheaper one, uh, the, the three mana one, though, the, like, you know, the, the slightly improved cancel like dissipate uh, and you know things like that brainstorm not so good unless you have shuffle effects face feather is fine but i'd rather have another o-ring or something a little bit cheaper and i feel like face feather might wheel time is good but not really what we need i just don't love mentoring this kind of deck uh i don't think it's gonna be great it might still be better in tamio I, I almost kind of want to pick the Windswept Heath because if we get a blue-white land that we can fetch, it's going to be really nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Hope we get a Tundra or Hallowed Fountain. I don't think we need Tamio, Face Feather, 
or mentor that match. One of them might just wheel, and if we can make the mana better somehow, that's really nice. Super Verdict is going to be an upgrade over dodge if it wheels, but I'm not going to pick it here. Signet, Banishing Light, and Glen are all very good. I think it's Glen. Glen just Glen just wins against some deck. You cast Glen, and they're like, okay, GG. So sometimes it's slow. Still very good. Yeah, there's a Sphinx, but this is an easy force of wheel. I, I don't think it's even close at this stage. In general, even in like in general, if you're playing blue white control in Vintage Tube. I think 80% of the time, Force of Will is going to be better than Sphinx in your deck. And when we already have that many finishers, it's, it's, you know, it's far from even being close, I think. It's clearly the, the foe. Yeah, a little bit light on early plays. That's what I'm worried about. Can't really afford to fall behind with this kind of deck. Force of Will, I guess, is an early play, but um, we need some more. Gideon, Gideon Alive of Zendikar is perfectly fine, but again, we need more cheap spells. And I'm not just going to play some random creature that are not good in my deck because I need two drop. I mean, I'd rather not, at least. Shell Dog's fine. I think Gideon's a little bit better here, though. Grim Monolith is really going to be good, really. Sometimes it's funny because you end up with a Grim Monolith, a Mana Vault or something like that, but you, you don't really have anything sick to ramp into. Here it's like, it's the opposite. We have so many things to do with our mana. There's an Ashiok. We have these two blue black, these two black lands. We have no other piece of fixing though. Could just pick Probe. Probe is not that good though. Not sure if I want to splash that with on, only two black lands, but there's not much else. A signet would be very good here. Again, we need more early plays. That's what what's matter right now. What's really important. I guess walking ballista is some we can play early. That's still not a lot though. And like turn to turn to ballista is not gonna save you from um yeah I don't know what crazy thing they might be doing. It's funny because sometimes you just don't see a lot of power. Uh it I think it's my four third or fourth draft in a row where I just don't get any piece of power or anything really broken. Like the the, the most broken card we have in the deck is Green Monolith. And um yeah. It, it can be difficult when you're playing against deck with moxies and whatnot that, that are just going to do everything a little bit faster. So having a slow curve is even more risky in this cube, in a way. Yeah, it looks like we're not getting um, lands to fetch. Uh, Marflat does help with the black fixing for Ashog, though. Another option is Relic Warder. Card is highly manicable in this cube. But let's pick Marsh Lads and probably play this Ashiok, I guess. Elf Path, why not? Still, yeah, this is not really what we need though. I mean, these cards are good, but... They are not early interaction or ramp. Brainstorm got a little bit better. We picked two fetch since the last time we saw the card. It's also a blue card we can pitch to force of wheel. It helps making our draw a little more smooth. Yeah, why not? I'm not not my favorite card, but here it seems fine. I don't think we want to play another four drop. 
yeah, I'll play Banishing Light. Um, it's early interaction, I guess. Verdict's an upgrade of our dodge, but I think we'd just rather have that. Stoneforge, we can't do anything great with it. Might, maybe I play Revoker in the main. It's just kind of a bad combo with the Wrath of God, though. We need to cut something, which I believe, maybe, I'm thinking about Ashok, honestly. But we have enough fixing, or maybe it's fine. Almost want to cut bribery, because in, against some deck it's kind of dead. Elf path is kind of weak, I think. She can stay on the battlefield a couple turns. She doesn't re-end the game or apply enough pressure. If you don't already have creatures. I think we need to keep these early pieces of interaction. To keep these early pieces of interaction, even though Balisa is not insane. Yeah. Our mana bay is not sick, but... Um, uh, I guess we'll have to do to go with that. So we have a this one of white already. We're gonna play one swamp. And then probably something like that. And this is eight white sources, nine blue sources, four black. I wish we could go nine nine, but if we don't play Swamp, Marsh Flats is just, you know, just a plains basically, so we kind of have to play the Swamp if we want this fixing to be relevant. Maybe I should just not play Ashok. Double White's actually more important than Double Blue, so we'll just do that. Yeah. Curve a little bit slow, a little bit too high. Fixing's not good. I think this deck is average, but it you know it's pretty powerful. So uh, and it has some really strong draws. And if we get to interact early or the open doesn't have too fast of a start, our late game should beat most late games. So there's that. That's gonna be it. I hope you enjoyed the draft. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be back for the rounds, I guess.